This tutorial is part of a YouTube playlist. You can access this and many more of the tutorials in this course. If you do like this YouTube playlist and you want to access the whole course, you can do on Udemy. The link to the YouTube playlist and YouTube course is in the video description. At this point, we now have a way of actually retrieving data from the database using our blueprint. We could build a query now within one of our functions to return data from the database. However, we cannot at the moment necessarily pass that data to the front end back to the client because we need to format that data, structure that data in a particular way so that we can exchange that data with the client from the server. So in the context of a Flask API or really for any API, a schema refers to a structured representation of the data exchange between the client and the server. So it defines the format, structure and rules for the data being sent or retrieved. So we're going to need to define some schemas so that we can prepare the data in a way that can then be sent back to the client once we've extracted it from our database. Now there are many ways for us to define schemas in Flask. Uh, libraries such as Marshmallow or Flask RESTful fields uh, are very commonly used. So we're going to be utilizing Marshmallow. Like I said, Marshmallow is a popular Python library used for object serialization and deserialization. So that's what we are essentially doing here with the data. So serialization, deserialization, Marshmallow provides a way to convert our data structures such as Python objects or database models into formats that can be easily transmitted back over to the client. So this process of extracting data from the database and preparing the data then into a format that can be sent to the client, that is what we call serialization. So let's uh, see if we can visualize this very briefly. So we have our database and then we also have, um, let's define our blueprint. So this is a part of our blueprint. One of our blueprints is related to categories. So one of our blueprints defines um, slash category and obviously get a get request. <clears throat> okay, so let's imagine we have a client. The client sends a request to our server. So that is at shop.com slash API slash category. So that request then goes, travels over to our server Obviously we make a match with the URL, so API category. So we make a match with one of our blueprints. It is a get request, wonderful. So what we need to do now is to make some sort of query. So within our, within our function, we make some sort of query. That query is going to then uh, be sent to the server, database, sorry. The data then is returned from the database and now we need to send it back to the client. Now, this is where the serialization takes place. So we need a way of converting that data that we've returned from the database into a format that can then be sent to the client. And typically we send it back in a JSON format. There are, other, there are other formats we can use, but we're going to be utilizing JSON format. So we need to prepare the data that's returned from our query into the JSON format. We then serialize that data. So that's the process of then transforming it and validating that data into our format so we then translate that or serialize that data and then it can then be sent back to the client so let's jump back into our project let's get marshmallow installed so let's just make sure we're in the right directory so i just need to go up a directory uh, where the requirements file resides now let's go ahead and pip install marshmallow so pip install marshmallow Take a couple of seconds and now I can pip freeze. Okay, so that's CD back into our project. The schema is used to define the expected structure and format of data. The schema will handle both serialization and deserialization potentially. So if the client were to send us some data that we want to store in the database, then we would deserialize that data. So we would take the data from the client that's been sent from the client, 
we would check it against our schema. So in this case, we would check uh, to make sure that data includes the name and it's a string and then the age it's going to be an integer it would then format that data into a format which can then be utilized to then actually be passed into the database so we can describe that as deserialization now serialization is just the other way as we've already described so when the client makes a request for data so maybe makes it a get request where the previous request would be a post request so actually sending data to be saved so now the client makes a get request so we then return make a query return that data from the database and then we can process it so we can then serialize that data into a format so this way is now serializing that data into a format now when the data is returned from the database we will still inspect the schema to make sure that what we're passing back to the client um, matches what we've described in our schema so what we end up sending back to the client in this case is going to be the name and the age um, in a JSON format back to the client. So that's going to be serialization. Now I do apologize, I forgot to install Flask Marshmallow, but this is going to provide us, a, like it says here, a thin integration layer for Flask and Marshmallow. So let's go ahead and install this too. Apologies. So let's uh, just CD back into the root and we go ahead and pip install flask marshmallow and then we just make sure that we can pip freeze update the requirements text okay so let's cd back into our project okay so we're now ready to initiate marshmallow uh, so head over to the core and the initialization file so at the top here let's go ahead and import so from flask uh, marshmallow let's go ahead and import uh, marshmallow okay right so you didn't necessarily have to install marshmallow then because if you installed flask marshmallow it would have installed marshmallow anyway so apologies about that um let's go ahead now and below the db migration let's go ahead and say ma equals marshmallow so we've created now an instance of marshmallow so we can now go ahead and initialize that. So let's drop down here to the extensions. We can refer this, refer to this as an extension. So ma dot initialize app app. Okay. So now we have initialize marshmallows extension within our Flask applications context. Obviously, that's going to get initialized because we're already bringing in the uh, initialized extensions when we start a new instance of our flask application so i've gone ahead and updated the diagram so we now have the schema and marshmallow and that's obviously initiated through the create app now we can go ahead and build a schema so inside of our core i've created a file here called schema.py let's go ahead and import marshmallow so from core import ma you're going to need to press escape there and now we can go ahead and create a new class schema so this can be the category schema now you can make multiple schemas so if you have multiple endpoints for a category and you want to perform different um, operations potentially on different endpoints you might set up different schemas for that and this can get very complicated very quickly there might be elements of um, inheritance added here as the complexity grows so ma schema uh, so we now just needed to find the schema so now what we're doing is essentially defining in our case the data that we want to work with so when the user makes a request for category data in this instance we want to define what data is actually serialized and returned back to the client so we can just add everything for now um, but that's something you might want to consider when you're building your own endpoint so we just need to define the field name, uh, the data type, so it's going to be an integer, and then any other specifics. So for now, we're just going to keep it like that. So let's just pump out all the fields. So name, ma dot uh, string. Okay, and then I think the slug we have as well in the category. So 
this will be a good start. I'm not, I'm not going to add all the fields. You could do if you like, but I'm not going to in this instance. Now, what's important here is that let's remember that the ID is auto incrementing in the database or potentially is auto incrementing in the database. So in actual fact, when we create a new instance of category, we don't necessarily define the ID. So if, for example, we were to use this schema to allow users to post data and for us to then serialize or deserialize the data to be then prepared and sent to the database to be saved, then we need to be careful what data is sent in the ID because in the database that might just be auto incrementing. It might just be added automatically. So what we might want to do here um, for that scenario is to add dump only equals true, which means that when we serialize the data from the category database, this will be added and sent back to the client. But if the client was to post data to send data to us for us to actually save into the database, it means that this would then be ignored. So when it's deserialized, this will be ignored. Ignored. There is a whole bunch of options. Um, we could add, for example, required equals true. So adding required true just means that when we are creating any objects, it means that this data must be required. Of course, if you do have any null values, or if these fields can be null in the database, that could potentially cause, cause errors. So we're just going to add that for now. We're going to say that this data is required. Um, so we just want to make sure that when we return data from the database or insert data, that we're going to make sure that that data is required. And of course, this will match up to the requirements that you've defined in your models. So if you have defined in your models and you are, um, for example, here we have nullable false, which means it is required and nullable false. That means this data is required. So we are matching our schema up with the actual database requirements here. So we need to be careful about data validation um, and make sure that we follow what we have defined within our models so that the data will be correctly inserted without any errors if we are going to be inserting data into the category table. And of course, we need to make sure um, if we are serializing from the database that the expected data will match if we are using, for example, required true to our schema. So now we have a simple schema. Let's go back into our inventory routes because we're going to need to define our schema there. So let's go ahead and import that in. So from um, core.schema, let's go ahead and import the category schema. So now we need to associate our schema with our endpoint that we're defining here. So for that, we're going to simplify this process and use a package called API Ferry.